Howard Burek was dumbstruck to learn he had an identical twin. The brother he never knew he had is Doug Rausch. Doug found out he had a twin in 2004 when the adoption service that split them up was going out of business. When Louise Wise was shutting down, there was a woman there who had cancer and who knew she was dying. And before she left and before this place closed down, she called Doug. That, Guilty conscience? Yeah, she couldn't go to her grave without letting some of these kids know that they had identical twins. She even told me, she goes, I'm not supposed to do this. I can get in a lot of trouble, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I appreciate that. Her conscience took yeah. over at that point. Yeah. So but someone had one. Someone had one, exactly. <laughs> she said, are you sitting down? And she said, well, I have some news for you. Are you, you have an identical twin brother. And I was like, I literally almost drove off the road. Like, it's not something you ever expect to hear. Doug gave the agency his number and waited anxiously to hear from his identical twin brother that he'd never known he had. Arriving at the airport in Columbus, Ohio, a long delayed reunion. Hi. Hi. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? Oh, man. Two years after finding out his brother existed, Howard is finally getting to meet him in person. Look in the mirror. It's definitely an eerie feeling. I'm going to look at you. And I, I just want to find out the phone, yes. <laughs> the mime thing going on. And it's just like you're looking at yourself in the mirror. And I think we hit it off, you know, right away. And, you know, instant connection. I felt like I knew Doug my whole life. Yeah. Their lives began as a single cell that split into two. They share almost identical DNA. As they compared the lives they have led separate and apart, they noticed patterns. He is very laid back and he's very sincere. Doug is very laid back. I always make the joke that sometimes we have to check his pulse to make sure he's still living. Howard's ideal date night is going to a five-star restaurant and getting prime rib. Steak is his favorite food. When they first met each other, they, it was just like they always knew each other. Doug would always <laughs> look at me and say, wouldn't it be cool to be twins, uh, to have twins? I always thought it would be cool to be a twin. We live parallel lives, essentially. You both have three kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, similar right. ages, too. Get up, get up, get up. Just get right in the middle. Watch where he's going. You guys both coach hockey? Yeah. Yep. Our both our, my, our kids both started playing, and we both, I never played growing up. I never and, did either. Uh, you both hold your wallet in your front yeah. pocket? I don't know how much is that is like genetic or just, but I don't know. How many people but, do that, though? So you got married the same year. Yeah. What year? Two. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God, you guys trouble. both had to think about it? Yeah, I knew. I was looking to see. I was just slow. <laughs> They both don't use any condiments at all. It's not just ketchup and mustard, it's condiments in general. It was the first question Diane asked, does Doug use condiments? And I'm like, he has no use for them. Doug and Howard's ketchup and mustard hating, fitting like a puzzle piece reunion, that's what Sharon Morella wanted too. She was obsessed with finding her identical twin. That's all you did is live and breathe it. Why that obsessive need? It was fascinating and cool and what would it have been like growing up yeah would we have been best friends would we have hated each other would we have shared everything like so many different things but we never had that chance Sharon was determined not to let this chance slip by I found her on Facebook and I sent her a little message we instantly bonded I mean from that first email it just like we just clicked we even named our younger ones the same name are you kidding so we both have a joshua so that was kind of like the first thing like no way in fact news of identical twins and triplets secretly separated by louise y services had been leaking out for decades in 1980, three 19-year-old men from the New York City area, Robert Shaffron, Eddie Galland, and David Kelman, total strangers, discovered they were identical triplets who'd been separated at birth by Louise Y. Services. They became folk heroes, making the rounds on national TV. What kind of cigarettes do you smoke? Marlboro. Do you all smoke the same brand? 
Yes. I was curious, uh, how's their taste of women? Is it similar? Yes. yes. Definitely. <laughs> Making a movie with Madonna. And a stop here at ABC on Nightline in 1989. Did you laugh as much before you knew one another? I don't think so. I don't think we were ever this happy. Serious. I don't think we were ever this happy. Oh, and this is a magic moment, guys, with the violin. <laughs> this magic it really moment. <laughs> uh, it really completed our lives. But as all these identical siblings get reacquainted, they all discover they had one more thing in common, something strange, something uncomfortable. Do you ever remember um, having people come over to the house to observe you? I do remember just a person coming, and I remember like looking at books. Yeah, you know, they would show me different pictures. I would have to say what. What did I think that picture was? Each of them has vague, unsettling memories of intrusive strangers coming to visit throughout their early childhood. People would come to my house and they would film me and they would make me ride my bike and they would, you know, do this test and that test. What did they ask you to do? All kinds of psychology tests and drawing and just looking at things and ink blots and drawings and talking to you and asking questions. And I was a, kind of a shy kid and, you know, you had people asking you questions and asking you to do stuff. It was a little bit horrifying. It turns out, after the twins and triplets were secretly separated, they were then enrolled in a mysterious psychological study without so much as a word of it whispered to their unsuspecting adoptive families. They made it sound like uh, this was to everybody's benefit to see how smart this kid is, because I don't know him. Here we're adopting a child. We don't know him. We don't know his background. But it never dawned on me, why are they coming back so many times? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.